with me, Geraldo Rivera, Jesse Weber, and Misty Maris. Jesse, uh, this is a case that's really divided Boston. Do you think that those supporting Karen Reed are giving the defense too much credit here, or you think they've got a real reasonable doubt argument? I mean, the defense has presented a lot so far without even an opening statement. You know, they've had a lot of pretrial motions. There's an investigation by the U.S. Attorney's Office into what happened here. Um, I'll tell you, I am curious if this divide that you're seeing in the public will be kind of a microcosm of what the jury will be. Will they have that kind of divide? <laughs> you asked me if there's a cover-up. Feels like a big pill to swallow, but then you kind of read through the tea leaves and you try to see a little bit more. There's an explanation for each one of these bad pieces of evidence. Then on the other side, is it has to be a cover up by EMTs, law enforcement, all at the behest of people to protect that part. Would, would it have to have been multiple people involved in the cover up? Well, 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 just to add to this, so the broken taillight, yeah. you would have to assume that someone got that taillight and then planted it on his body. Ugh, that's the little tough, wow. tough sell. Yeah, I think a conspiracy and a cover-up, that's hard to sell to a jury. It's very complicated. And right now we know some of the evidence that's going to come in. There's significant evidence about an acrimonious relationship yeah. between her and the victim. And I don't know, I think a jury's more likely to go for that more simple explanation. But, but a retired DEA special agent was on Banfield this week, and he believes that there is no way that Karen Reed's taillight could have shattered at the scene as prosecutors are insisting. Let's listen. I went to Lexus dealerships. They told me not only do they have, it's a polycarbonate plastic, one of the hardest plastics you can have. The law of physics, but there you go, right there. See all that red? In the, in uh -huh. the final picture where the prosecutors are saying, this is how it en ends up, it's no way. So polycarbonate plastic, very hard. 6,500 pounds going into a 220-pound male uh, human will topple him over. It will not crack up the, the tail in 37-plus pieces. Geraldo, reasonable doubt? I think so. And I don't know how in the hell are you going to... Uh... Uh, you're going to prove it I, one way or the other. I know uh, you only want uh, the jury's only go one way, but uh, uh, it's it's baffling to me. The, the I would focus on the email, uh, how long uh, to live in the snow and the cold. Uh, you know, what's that about? Uh, is, is it uh, more uh, like the Kansas City case where they're searching uh, for, for the innocents wandering in the storm? Uh, you know, I, I, I think this is a very tough case. I can't see how you get a conviction out of this uh, based on this evidence. And they, a cop next door, uh, you know, cops and but the, the, how often do you the get only cops issue is that against once you cop? start claiming that there was a frame job, right, you're kind of forcing the defense to have a burden. Right. Right. Yeah. Even if it's not legally a burden, but but practically the jurors are going to say, yeah. have they proven this or not? You it's, know, it's interesting yeah. you say that because they said we're, we're going forward with this third party culprit defense. It's not our burden to tell you who it was. Right. Right. But we're kind of telling right. you. Who no, it was but but, but I do yeah. think that they add a burden to themselves. Yeah. Anyway, everyone's going to stick around still ahead.